Okay, I want to go over some uh, Bible contradictions. This is what I used to do when I was first saved, when I was first born in the Spirit of God. I would, I figured, you know, I was 31 years old. This is back in 2001. And I figured I had a lot of catching up to do because I didn't grow up in a church. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I knew that I was born of the Spirit of God, and I knew that the Bible is true and that there cannot be any contradiction whatsoever. I didn't know what the Bible said. I didn't, you know, I didn't know nothing about nothing. But I knew that the Bible was true. I knew, I knew that Jesus was real and Jesus is real. So uh, one of the things that I did, along with reading every day, is I would take a look at Bible contradictions contradictions right and to see what people were saying and because I knew there had to be an answer all right so just saying that there is a contradiction doesn't mean that there is a contradiction so that's what I want to do here today and so I just did a search for Bible contradictions the very first one atheist.org you can imagine these people hate the Lord Jesus Christ so who better to show us what the contradictions are other than people that hate the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take a look here. It is a central dogma of all fundamental Christians that the Bible is without error. That's true. Of course, there are some Christians who will say that, and then they can't point to any Bible. So there's a split among Christians in regards to that. And I think that's, an, that's another topic, but an important one as well. They teach this conclusion by reasoning that God cannot be the author of false meaning and he cannot lie. Is this true? Absolutely. If written by a perfect being, then it must not contradict itself. As a collection of books written by different men at different times over many centuries would be expected to contradict each other. And so that's absolutely true. And so just uh, let's take a... Oops. Take a look here at what the Bible says here. At first, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All right, so you've got a, we got a book, um, you know, um, the Bible is uh, 66 books written by over 40 authors, but there's really only one true author. Uh, written over a period of, um, I, I think it was 1,600 years or whatever it was. It's in the most amazing book on earth, and nothing comes even close to it. All right, so, and, but this is absolutely right that there, if this is written by God, it's got to be 100% true. There cannot be one mistake in it. All right, and uh, so with this in mind, let us have a look at the Bible on several subjects. All right, so the first one, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Exodus 20, verse 8. And one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, Romans 14, verse 5. All right, so first of all, uh, if you look at uh, the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, if you look at that day as ele elevated above every other day, that's okay. If you look at every single day as equal, that's okay too. That doesn't mean you're not remembering the Sabbath day. It doesn't mean you're not keeping it holy, right? Right? It just means you look at every day as precious. And I think that's, in my opinion, that's that's where I am. I think you just look at today and be thankful for this day. That's my stance on it. But if you view the Sabbath or the Saturday as an elevated day, that's okay too. All right. And so, and that that's really all that Romans 14 Verse 5 is saying, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So there's no contradiction there. You, you could have just as well uh, 
opened up a Bible and stuck your finger down and, and then did that twice and say, okay, these two verses contradict one another. Just saying that there's a contradiction doesn't mean there's a contradiction. In fact, you're exposing yourself as somebody that lacks understanding, right? No understanding whatsoever. So let's take a look at the next one. Ecclesiastes, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, chapter 1, verse 4, the earth abideth forever. And then 2 Peter 3, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right, so this is another simple one. All right, so in uh, Ecclesiastes, it the earth abides forever. It does. And in the Revelation 21, all right, so we can see here in Revelation 21 that uh, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. All right, so the earth that was will be burned up. Right, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It doesn't mean that the earth isn't going to be there. It's just going to be a new earth, right? And it's really not, you're trying too hard to force a contradiction, and you're making yourself look kind of silly. And what's that one verse? Uh, uh, Let's see if I can remember anything. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. I think you're smart here. This is as dumb as they get right there to say that's a contradiction. But here, now we got a good one. Seeing God. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Genesis 32, verse 30. And I that, I believe that's Jacob. And no man has seen God at any time. John 1, verse 18. So, let's see. i got a couple minutes. So, let's dig into this. This is um, an interesting one here. Let's see if I can get to that verse here. All right. Let's do this here. And I think it was verse 30. All right, so uh, let's start at 29. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So uh, just to sort of give you a backdrop, if you will, or whatever, uh, the, the context of what's going on, this is where... Uh, Jacob, uh, he wrestled with this guy and, uh, the, you know, um, there was a wrestling going on and, um, and he said, let me go. The day breaks. I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And then Jacob asked him, you know, what is thy, what is, um, your name? And he, and uh, let's see, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him. And then Jacob calls this place where he had this, uh, you know, wrestling match, if you will. Uh, he called this place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So, this doesn't mean God, or I'm sorry, this doesn't mean Jacob actually saw God face to face. This is just the, what he called this place. All right, and so if I could go a little deeper into that, uh, let me think here. Uh, to sort of help understand this uh, a little bit. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Right. Maybe I can find... Uh, 
something a little bit. Um, right, this is a great study. See, this is why I like doing these because it really, some of these will challenge you. And you, so you go and you look and you study and it's all, it's all good. Right. The more you learn, the more, you know, the more you read, the more you learn, the more you study, the more, you know, all good things. Right. Let's see if I can. I can get here yeah there this is this is what uh, I don't know in my opinion this kind of helps clear up a little bit so let's read let me just read the first two or three here behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Okay, so I think that really kind of clears that up, in my opinion, because uh, it essentially... It's saying that we don't know exactly what you know what he shall look appear to be or what he shall look like or what uh, even ourselves will look like uh, because there's going to be an obvious change when we are uh, going when we are changed from this incorruptible I'm sorry when we are changed from this corruptible into this incorruptible um, Let's see if I can find, you know, I can, you know, this is why I like kind of like doing this stuff because you could just go. You could just go and run with this stuff. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. All right, so, uh, you know, really, I, w I went too far. But I, I hope that sort of clarifies a little bit the difference here in Genesis 32, it's Jacob. He's in this wrestling match with somebody he doesn't know. And it's all night. And uh, so he just, he names this place. All right. He names this place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. It doesn't mean that he actually saw God face to face. And it certainly doesn't mean that there's a contradiction here in John. 1 verse I think 18 where it says no man has seen God at any time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he has declared him and of course I mean we could go away too long with this but um, we could go to uh, Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness so we are in the likeness and image of God already. Doesn't mean we are God. It doesn't mean we look exactly like God, but we are in the image of God. So there's the image of God and there's the foreshadowing and all this sort of stuff. But like it says in you know, first John chapter three, um it, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay, so anyways, uh, great stuff, interesting stuff, and let me know what you think about this. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind going through all of these. I just don't want to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, I don't want to overdo it. But uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these. I, I think it's, it, it's kind of interesting. I enjoy them.